guys, it's Anissa. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be testing a bunch, and I mean a bunch of high-end foundations for you guys. If you guys recently watched Savora VIB sale haul, I picked up a lot of higher-end foundations, and I also have more foundations coming in the mail because I did do some Cyber Monday shopping. In brief summary, what I do when I buy new makeup is I have drawers and I separate the makeup into full face of first impressions. One video, I'll have like a new foundation, new concealer, new primer, new eyeshadow. So I don't have the same amount of every product. And I usually end up having a lot more foundations than anything. So when I don't have a video to put those foundations in, I have to sit and wait for me to get products to use it with. Especially with high-end foundations, I usually end up being out of the time frame to return it if I don't like it, if I need a new shade. I was Black Friday shopping, ironically, and I had this amazing idea to just do a video dedicated to foundations. I will be doing a couple of these throughout the next couple months because I do have a lot of foundation that I need to try. I'm trying to kind of empty out my collection and cleanse because it is the end of the year and I'm getting ready to do my best of beauty. I hope that you guys like this concept. If you guys do, please let me know. Basically what I did was just a one day wear test on each of them, which is why it's considered a first impression because this is not an in-depth review. I do have in-depth reviews on some foundations that I've tried and I will link my review playlist right up here for you guys. I hope you guys enjoy. I had a lot of fun filming this for you guys and testing new makeup for you, just in a different fashion. If you guys like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I post on this channel every four days so you never have to miss me for too long. If you do like full face to first impressions, I do have a playlist full of full face to first impressions, full face to one brand tutorials, all that good stuff that I will put right up here for you guys to check out and binge watch after you watch this video. Let's just go ahead and get into right, it. Guys, we are ready for day number one and foundation number one. I wanna go ahead and do skin prep with you guys. I have found that I cannot live without primer water, especially in the winter time. This is the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water and it is a set and refresh spray. My skin has been so dry in the winter time, which is so funny because I never thought that my skin would ever be dry because of how oily it was when I was a younger teenager. For my hydrating primer today, because I do use two always, I'm gonna be using the Huda Beauty Water Jelly Hydrating Primer. I wanted to go ahead and mention to you guys that I am just gonna be showing you guys the complexion foundation part of the makeup. I am gonna be using primers that I like. I am in the process of trying to also test concealer, so I'm not gonna really pay attention to the under eyes. And I figured that it would be okay for me to test concealers as well because I really don't put a whole lot of foundation underneath my eyes. We're kind of like doing dual testing, but really focusing on the foundations in this video. For my pore filling slash mattifying primer, I'm gonna be using this Rare Beauty Pore Diffusing Primer. I have bought so many new foundations that I was so sick and tired of trying foundations and then not liking them and not being able to return them because I was out of the time frame. And I know personally, this is a video that I would wanna watch because my favorite part of makeup is complexion. I absolutely love watching other people do their complexion. Here I have foundation number one. This is the Hourglass Vanish Seamless Finish Foundation. I have the color Sable. On this channel, when we test new foundations, we always do have sponge, half brush, so that is exactly what I'm going to be doing. I want you to keep in mind that this is not like my review videos where I do like a three day wear test. This is me trying to do my first impression to see if I want to return this product or if it's something that I feel like I can test a little bit more. Especially with complexion, sometimes you have to try a product a couple times to be able to tell if you like it. But I'm hoping that this will just kind of give me somewhat of an idea because I'm using primers that I really, really like. So I'm hoping that that will kind of help eliminate any bias that will happen. Ooh, okay, coverage is good. I feel like the match isn't bad either. I was so excited to try this foundation because I absolutely love, love, love the stick foundation. It's the only stick foundation I've ever tried and actually liked. This is giving me medium coverage and I can tell that it does dry down to be a soft matte finish. I don't know if that's what it claims to be. I don't care if a foundation is medium coverage or full coverage, but I really am not super into light coverage foundation. When I put makeup on, I am putting makeup on. I want everything to be covered or majority of things to be covered. I'm not one of those like tinted sunscreen type of girls that can just rub it in with their fingers and be done. I'm not that blessed. It was very easy to blend in. The formula is not too thick. It was a very nice consistency. It was actually a little bit more on the runnier thin side. From far away, it actually looks like it has somewhat of a soft matte finish, but when you get up closer, it is a soft matte slash natural finish. And that actually looks really beautiful on the skin. I do always use a little bit less foundation on the brush side because a brush will give you a little bit more coverage than a sponge will. Nine times out of 10 because you think about it, a sponge soaks up your product. So not all of that product is staying on your face. Some of it is gonna stay in your sponge. And I mean, a brush does the same thing, but it, it's not going to be as prone to sucking up your product. Going in with a foundation brush. Ooh, that has really good coverage with a brush. 
almost feel like that was full coverage with a brush. And the only reason I say that is because I have about the same amount of redness and pigmentation, hyperpigmentation on both sides of my face. And if you can tell, I haven't blended it out all the way, but all of my discoloration is gone over here. This reminds me of the stick foundation because it is just blending into the skin like butter. I think I like the brush side better just because it gives a little bit more coverage. It still looks very skin-like. I just wanted to zoom you guys in and let you see. This is what the brush side is looking like. And then this is what the sponge side is looking like. So they both look really pretty, but I definitely think that this side has more coverage. Some foundations I like better with a sponge, some foundations I like better with a brush. I found that foundations that are thicker, I tend to like with a brush a little bit better because they're just a little bit easier to buff into the skin. I'm really surprised. I usually always like the sponge side better when it comes to thinner products, and this is a more thin consistency. It is very lightweight on the face. I love the way that my face is looking just with this foundation. If I use a medium coverage foundation, I will tend to also use a powder foundation just so the powder foundation can catch any imperfections that the liquid foundation didn't. But with this brush side, I feel like I could honestly use a translucent powder and be good to go. But I am gonna go ahead and finish the rest of my face and let you guys know application-wise if there's anything else that went on. I went ahead and finished my makeup. I decided not to do any eyeshadow today because I don't have as much time as I'd like to do my makeup. But I feel like for just a simple glam, this looks really, really cute. I do think the foundation oxidized just a little bit. And I only say that because up here on my forehead around my hairline, it's a little bit darker right here than it is here. I felt like the foundation originally was a really good match for me. So now I'm just going to keep in mind since it oxidizes. I have found something that I like better than the NYX Hue Shifters. LA Girl Pro Pigment Mixing. I have this in yellow, blue, and white. They don't make a darker color. I found that I like these better than the NYX Hue Shifters because the one thing that sucks about the NYX Hue Shifters is if you put too much in it, it makes your foundation really, really watery because it is a more water-based product versus this is a little bit thicker, so it's not going to water down your foundation. The reason I'm saying that is because now that I know that this oxidizes, I will probably add a little bit of this in here to lighten it up. That way when it oxidizes, it oxidizes more toward my skin tone and not past my skin tone. I did use a powder foundation. I don't have any blush or anything like that on. I am gonna be wearing a mask today. It's currently 136, so I'm curious to see how this is gonna do with wearing a mask for a little bit. It does claim to be transfer proof, sweat proof, and waterproof, so I'm really, really curious to see if it comes off with the mask. It claims to be full coverage, which I definitely agree with. It says that you can use it without primer. It comes in 32 shades, which is pretty impressive. This is not a super in-depth review. This is kind of just like a first impressions type of thing. If you guys want my follow-up thoughts on these foundations after I've tried them multiple times, I will include little mini updates in my Shop My Sashes, which I will link that playlist right up here for you guys. And it claims that you're only supposed to be able to use half of a pump on your face for full coverage, but I feel like that's really debatable because not everybody's face is the same size. I use like a pump and a half, and I feel like if I would have used one pump, I really could have got away with full, the full coverage if I used a brush, but not a sponge. First impressions, I'm very impressed. I am gonna be wearing this for around seven or eight hours today, so we're gonna get a good wear out of it. This is what the skin is looking like right now, and it feels really lightweight. It feels awesome on the face, and it's not drying. I will check in with you guys in a couple okay, of hours. So it is currently 7.13. I've had this makeup on for about six hours. I was gonna do a check-in halfway through and then I got really deep into editing. I'm just doing a check-in now. I'm not taking the makeup off quite yet. I'll probably have it on for like two or three more hours, but I did wanna hop in front of the camera for you guys. I want to emphasize the fact that I have not touched this makeup up at all. And I also had a mask on for like three hours. My cheeks are completely matte. Starting to have a little bit of oil breakthrough right in here. To show you guys up close, for this to be six hours of wear, it looks like I've really only had this makeup on for like two or three hours. So I'm very, very impressed with the wear of it so far. I'm really not sure how much longer I'm gonna be up for. I wanna get a couple more things done and then take my makeup off very last. That way I can have it on for as long as possible today. I will check in with you guys when I'm ready to take it off. Okay, so it is currently 9.45. So I've had this makeup on for close to nine hours. For this to be nine hours of wear and I didn't use setting spray, which I did not realize until just now. I'm pretty impressed. It did not separate or came onto the face weird, which is really what I look for, especially over time. I don't want things to look weird on different parts of my face. If my oil's breaking through, that's one thing because that can be blotted and fixed, but clumping over here, that's not cute. For this to be nine and a half hours of wear with no touch up, I would say 10 out of 10. I will see you guys tomorrow morning. Hey guys, good morning. I went ahead and washed my hair this morning and decided to do some eyeshadow with some winged liner. I'm going to start by using this e.l.f. Oil Control Primer Mist. I'm sorry if I'm talking weird. I have my Invisalign trays in. Hydrating primer, and I'm going to be using this Milan 
Milani Chill Out Soothing Primer that is silicone free. This stuff feels so amazing on the skin. The most creamy, hydrating, cooling texture. I went ahead and did a face mask yesterday and put extra moisturizer underneath my eyes. They're not as dry as they were yesterday from when I had that awful allergic reaction. Pore filling slash mattifying primer. I'm gonna use this e.l.f. Poreless Petty Primer. This is the pink one. Just targeting the mattifying slash pore filling primer in my T-zone. And I also wanted to say from yesterday, I was really impressed with how the foundation did not break up weird in here. I was surprised the lasting power that Hourglass foundation had. Today we're gonna try the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation, and this is in the color 14 Neutral. Before I apply the foundation, I just wanna go ahead and read a little bit about it to you guys. That way I know kind of what to expect, which I wish I would've done this first yesterday, but we live and we learn. Claims to be a full coverage foundation that comes in 44 shades, which is actually quite impressive. It claims to have a natural matte finish. It's supposed to be smoothing and pore blurring and also hydrating with anti-aging and anti-pollution ingredients. I love when a foundation claims to be hydrating and mattifying at the same time because I found with a lot of mattifying foundations that I used to love, they like sucked all of the life out of your face. When you have something that's hydrating, it still gives your face dimension. It doesn't make you look super flat. It claims to be sweat proof, humidity proof, waterproof, and transfer resistant. I will be wearing a mask for about an hour and a half today, so we'll see. I wanted to mention yesterday, the Hourglass Foundation seemed to be transfer for proof. I had powder on my face, but you can tell if you use powder foundation and liquid foundation, you can tell if a liquid foundation is transfer proof. If you have parts of your face that look different colors, that means the powder foundation and the liquid foundation got pulled off and that did not happen. And then lastly, it does say that it oxidizes. So I want to go ahead and pump this out and see what color I get because if I feel like it's a perfect match, I'm just gonna add a little bit of the LA Girl Pro pigment since it does oxidize. This is what it looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little bit of this LA Girl Foundation Mixing Pigment in the color white. That way when it dries down, it doesn't look super, super dark and muddy on me. I use this almost every time I do my makeup. This is the Morphe Mixing Plate and it came with this little spatula. I didn't wanna add too much because the color is good, but I don't know how much it oxidizes and I don't want it to be super dark and muddy. You can add the most beautiful foundation and if it's too dark, it looks so muddy and bad on the skin. Again, we're gonna do half sponge, half brush. Just to show you guys that the mixing pigment really does work. This is the before and this is the after. I found that one and a half to two pumps is pretty good for me for the full face. Blending into the skin nicely. This is what the first coat looks like. I would say medium to full. I am gonna go ahead and build it up today because I'm gonna use translucent powder all over the face. When you're building up, guys, you don't have to put as much on for the second layer as you did the first layer. I feel like the color is really not bad either. This looks very, very skin-like, but it has that soft natural matte finish. This looks really, really pretty up close. I am glad that I went ahead and lightened it because I think the shade is a little bit too dark for me, but I can make it work. I did use about a pump and a half on this side of my face. I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little bit more. So I did a pump of the foundation and then about a third of the pump of the mixing pigment. This reminds me a lot of the NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation. The NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation has a little bit more coverage than this, but that's the vibes I'm getting. Definitely getting a lot more coverage with the brush than I did with the sponge. And I kind of do stippling, circling motions. But you know what? Now looking at my face, what's so crazy about this foundation is it claims to be a neutral undertone, but it really is more warm. Let me know what you guys think. I think that this is definitely pulling way more warm tones than it is neutral. I think I'm hating the color a little bit more on the brush side because I am getting more coverage with this side. The color is a lot more prevalent, if that makes sense, but it looks beautiful on the skin. The 13 neutral is way too light, and I don't want to try the warm because I can only imagine how yellow the warm shade would be if this is what the neutral shade claims to be. I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10 because I'm not in love with the color. Next time I use that, I'm gonna use this and my blue pigment to kind of take some of the warmthness out and neutralize it a little bit more. Let me go ahead and do the rest of my face and then I will come back and show you guys finished result give you any more thoughts that I have while finishing up my makeup. So I went ahead and finished the rest of my face. I think I'm just really having one of those bad makeup days. As I was doing the makeup, 
the foundation got darker and darker and darker. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it was not this dark. Besides the fact that it was exponentially oxidizing, it still does look really, really beautiful and flawless on the skin. I've had foundations oxidize, but I've honestly never had one oxidize this much. It really, really irritates me when brands mislabel things because that's what confuses people. You know what neutral looks like, but then something like this comes out and you know that it's not neutral and it's more warm then people get confused, especially when you're trying to learn makeup and are just getting into it. It's currently 12.35. I started filming this at about 11, which I did put my foundation on at that point. So I'm gonna start that as my wear time and I will check in with you guys every once in a while. Good morning, guys. It is day number three. I went ahead and just took a clip last night. I was way too tired. I took the makeup off at about 9.30, so I had the makeup on for close to 10 hours. As far as the wear went, my cheeks looked pretty much the same as they did in the beginning, and then I could tell that my oil was kind of starting to break through on my forehead, but I was very impressed because sometimes I found that when my oil breaks through the foundation, the oil and the foundation start to mix and they look really weird, and it did not happen. It kind of just looked like my forehead does now, shiny. It wasn't balling up really weird or hanging on really weird. It was very comfortable to wear. It did not feel super heavy on the face. I did wear a mask for about an hour and a half and I had a little to no transfer. The only transfer I had was from the powder foundation that I used. I would give that foundation an eight and a half out of 10 just because it oxidized so, so bad. I think it deepened at least two or three shades. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to keep the shade that I have and I'm going to make sure that I mix white and blue with it. The white will help lighten it and the blue will get rid of some of the warmth that was in there because it did look a little bit yellowy orange so I wasn't loving the color, but I thought the wear was awesome. If you are interested in buying this, just be very wary of the fact that it does greatly oxidize. When I repurchase it, I'll probably go down to 13 neutral instead of 14 neutral. I'm very excited to try today's foundation because this is very long overdue. This is the Dior Air Flash Spray Foundation. I have the color 4,5N. This foundation retails for $62, which is definitely more on the pricier side of things. If I end up liking this, I will probably not use this daily. This will be like a special event type of foundation. It's supposed to be an ultra fluid water resistant foundation that blends with full coverage and it has a lightweight formula. Claims to have up to 12 hours of wear. Finish is radiant. Claims to be for all skin types. It's not saying anywhere on here that it oxidizes so I'm hoping that it's going to be true to color. And I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys yesterday but I have found that soft matte matte finish foundations tend to oxidize way more than natural finish foundations. And I think it's because they kind of dry down from liquid to powder versus a more natural finish foundation just stays a liquid formula. If I'm looking correctly, I think it comes in 24 shades, which is not a super broad range. It's not awful, but we can definitely do better than 24 shades. Looking at the shade range, it definitely does lean more on the lighter side of things. There's four arms that I'm looking at. The first three arms are pretty light, and then you have one arm that's covered in darker shades. I was hoping that there would be instructions on here for how I'm supposed to apply this because I feel like spraying it directly on my face would be very wasteful because the product would like get in my hair and on my neck and on my shirt. I'm thinking that it may be best and most resourceful to just spray it directly on my Morphe mixing plate. That way I'm not wasting any product, especially considering the fact that this is over $60. Gonna go ahead and start by priming. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my primer mist first. This is the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Set and Refresh Spray. And it does come with two layers. There's like a green layer and a blue layer on the bottom. So you gotta shake it. Let that sit for a second. I'm telling you, doing your makeup first thing in the morning and having a primer mist to just refresh soothes my soul. For hydrating primer, I'm just gonna be using this MAC Mineralized Charged Water Gel. This is going to be my moisturizing hydrating primer. I do have a good amount of discoloration on my skin. But as far as my texture goes, I'm pretty happy with the fact that I really don't have a whole lot of pimples right now. We are going to go in with a pore filling slash mattifying primer. This is the Too Faced Primed and Poreless Skin Smoothing Face Primer. I actually prefer silicone based pore filling primers because I feel like they literally fill in your pores. It's kind of like when construction workers fill in a pothole, they go in with the concrete in that hole and then smooth it over. That's the best analogy. 
that I can use when describing silicone based primers. I know not everybody likes them because I mean, they technically are clogging your pores, but it's not like you're keeping it on your face all day. You're washing it off. And that's why I make sure to exfoliate and double cleanse when I wear makeup. I just feel like they work better for my skin. I'm feeling really, really confident in the base that I have on. I have really set this foundation up to succeed. And if it doesn't, then it's not this girl's fault. I just went ahead and wet my sponge. This is the e.l.f. Marshmallow Blender, literally the softest sponge you will ever try in your life. While I was wetting it, I was thinking about the fact that usually I tell you guys, I used a pump and a half on this side and then I used like two pumps on this side. Well, I can't do this because this isn't a pump. Tell you guys how many seconds I hold down the nozzle for, and that's what we're gonna estimate on. I don't know if this is gonna spray everywhere, so I'm gonna kind of hold it back. This is the color. It looks <coughs> a little light. Oh my gosh, there is aerosol everywhere. This does look a little bit lighter than the first time I swatched it. Actually, that looks like a really good match. I would say I held the nozzle for about three seconds, sponge side first. I love this for me. Yesterday it was too dark, now it's too light, oh, potentially. And it is a very liquidy formula. It is so much easier to fix foundation that is lighter than it is to fix foundation that is darker because even when I went over my foundation yesterday with a lighter powder foundation, it still just looked muddy to me. I'm definitely getting more of a natural coverage, but we're gonna go ahead and see if we can build it up. I'm out of product, so I'm gonna go ahead and spray a little bit more. I definitely got a little bit more coverage with the second layer. I feel like I always think things are too light when in reality, it's perfect for me. I wanted to mention too that I feel like the undertone on this truly is neutral. I'm gonna go ahead and add one more layer. I never usually ever do two layers let alone three, but I do wanna go ahead and see if I can build this up. With the second layer, I feel like I got more so medium coverage. So let's see if we can build this up to full. The more layers you add, the more likely there is for your makeup to look cakey. This foundation is very your skin, but better. It makes your skin look very healthy. This is the before and this is the after. Instead of holding the nozzle down consecutively, what I've been doing is just little spritz. Did about six or seven of those on this side. Now we're gonna go in with a brush. Oh my gosh, that has way more coverage initially. Very easy to blend out, very lightweight formula. With my first layer on the sponge side, I feel like I got more so of a light coverage versus with one layer on the brush side, I definitely feel like this is more medium coverage. Pretty consistent with all the foundations we've tried so far. We have gotten more coverage with a brush than we have a sponge initially. I'm gonna go ahead and build it up and see if we can get it to full. This can be built up to full coverage. When foundations say that they have light to full coverage, that's very sus to me. But the fact that this is so liquidy, it's a lot easier to build it up to that full coverage and not have it be cakey versus if you have a foundation that claims to be light to full coverage and it is a thicker consistency, it's a lot more cakey and harder to get a flawless full coverage. Zoom you guys in and show you what the skin looks like. Can probably tell you guys now that just because this foundation is so expensive, I will probably only use a brush because I actually used less product on this side of my face to get full coverage with a brush, and I had to use more coverage on this side of my face to get a medium coverage. Both sides look beautiful. It's not hanging on weird at all. Although it is kind of suspicious when foundations claim to have light to full coverage, it kind of gives you more options. So if you want lighter coverage one day, you can have lighter coverage one day. If you want full coverage one day, you can also get that. So I feel like this product is very, very multifaceted. I do agree that it does have a natural finish. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of my face and then I will be back to talk to you guys. Um, it is currently 10:17. I started filming at about nine o'clock. Gonna go ahead and use that as my start time. I will see you guys soon. It is 6:14, so I've had this makeup on for a good eight hours. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what it looks like up close. So my cheeks usually always seem to stay normal, even when I'm wearing a more radiant finished foundation. And then I usually expect for my oils to come through in here and on my forehead, but around my nose is still actually really really matte like my pores look really good up close 
and then this is what my cheek looks like. You can see that the oil did start to break through right here, but if you pay close attention like the past two days, this foundation is not breaking up weird at all. I get if my oils break through, but if they're breaking through and the oil and the foundation are mixing really weirdly, then it's hard to touch the makeup up because once you touch it up, it looks weird. Versus if I were to touch this up, it would look fine because it's not separating weird at all, if that makes sense. I really don't have any complaints about this foundation. I am gonna give it a nine out of 10 though, because I feel like it could have a better shade range for how expensive it is. This is actually one of the better natural finish foundations that I've tried. And I mean, I've had this on for eight hours and I would say that it's water resistant too, because it was raining outside and my makeup is not disturbed or anything at all. I do not look like I've been wearing makeup for eight hours in my opinion. I'm really happy with this. We are on a roll guys. I haven't found a foundation yet that I don't like first impressions with the wear test. We got four more to go. I will see you guys in the morning. We are ready to start day four. Already did my eyeshadow. Today for primer mist, I'm gonna go ahead and use the e.l.f. Hydrating Primer Mist. Right after that, I'm using this NYX Bear With Me Hydrating Jelly Primer as my hydrating primer. This stuff literally feels like jello. And I like this too because it's hydrating, but it also gives a little bit of tack to the skin. I want to go ahead and use this today because I think I can empty it. Professional Pore Rescue. This is the original formula. I have a big one of it, but this month I have emptied out more makeup products than I think I ever have. This is very similar to the NYX Pore Filler. It's honestly just a little bit thicker in consistency. And I am going to use it all over my face today. Well, that was all for nothing because I still have product in here. Maybe we can empty it out tomorrow. Foundation number four is going to be this Clinique Even Better Serum Foundation, and this has SPF 25 in it. I have the color WN114 Golden D. It has a pump on it. It is a dome shape. The packaging is very, very unique. Comes in a glass bottle. Comes in 42 shades, which looking at the shade chart, it's very hoppy and skippy. I feel like they cover a lot of undertone. Six looks darker than shade seven, but shade six is a little bit warmer than shade seven. And then you have some pink shades and I'm having shades that like pop out at me versus it being like a gradient. Claims to be a breakthrough foundation with three serum technologies for combination oily skin. Coverage is moderate to full with a satin finish. And it's actually supposed to visibly improve skin instantly and over time. So this is like skincare slash makeup. And it says it has 24 hour color true wear. So it's claiming not to oxidize. It claims to be waterproof, sweat proof, humidity proof. It does not claim to be transfer proof. Oil free, paraben free. I'm gonna go ahead and start with two pumps. I'm just gonna put a little bit on my skin to see how the color is gonna be. Oh, that color is really good. So if this doesn't oxidize, this color should be pretty good and true. Real Technique sponge. Ooh. It has good coverage. One of the first high-end foundations that I ever tried was the Clinique 2-in-1 foundation. I still have it and it's pretty close to being emptied. When I saw that they had a new formula, I was like, oh yeah, I've got to try that. First impressions, I would definitely say this is medium to full, more so leaning on the full side of things. Usually I tend to say medium if I feel like I need to build on top of it and I really don't feel like I need to build on top of this, which is why I'm saying it's leaning more towards full. And this is with the sponge. So I can't imagine the type of coverage it's going to have with a brush. Looking up close, it's very skin-like, it's not cakey, it's not hanging onto any of my texture weird, and it completely got rid of all the coloration, discoloration that I had on this side of my face. I'm just gonna go ahead and start off with what I have left on here, and if I need to pump out any more, I will. Just put half a pump more on there, so we're up to two and a half pumps right now, which I don't even think I'll end up using the whole thing. I'm gonna go in with this e.l.f. Ultimate Blending Brush. And when you're doing your foundation, you wanna do more of a stippling motion versus a rubbing motion because the stippling motion will make sure that the product is actually getting into your skin versus a rubbing motion. It's just going to wipe the product away. When you do more of a swiping motion, it will make any product look more patchy because it's not being evenly distributed. I don't think this has a satin finish. This really is more of a, between soft matte and matte, leaning more on the matte side of things. I actually got about the same amount of coverage with the brush, but I used less product on this side of my face. On this side of my face, I used roughly two pumps. Over here, I really did more like a pump, a pump and a half. Let you guys see what it looks like up close. 
and I feel like it did not oxidize. When it said that it was true to color, I assumed that it was gonna be more of a natural finish, but it doesn't look like it's oxidizing to me. I'm gonna go ahead, finish the rest of my face, and come back to you guys and let you know if it oxidizes, how the application process is when I put things over top of it, and I will be right back. All right, guys, I went ahead and finished the face. I'm actually very happy with the way that the makeup turned out today. I do not feel like the foundation oxidized very heavily. If my face looks a little darker, it's because I used a powder foundation. I feel like I look very, very filtered. It's currently 12 o'clock. I started filming at about 11. We're gonna wear this makeup till about seven, eight o'clock, and then come back. I haven't been home the past couple days like I thought I would be to check in with you guys. So if I do get the chance to run home today, just for like even a four hour check-in, I definitely will do so. Hopefully I will see you guys in a couple hours. All right guys, it is currently 428. So I've had this makeup on for like seven hours. I'm not taking it off yet, but I wanted to go ahead and check in with you guys because I just got home. I feel like I'm still looking really good. I can tell that my oil is starting to peek through right in here, but it's not bad for it to be hour eight. I also wanted to point out to you guys underneath my eyes, this is not a foundation. This is the powder that I used. As far as wear goes, for me to be on hour seven and only have a little bit peeking through right here, I feel like this one is the most long lasting that I've tried so far because with the other foundations, I kind of could start to tell that my oil was starting to peek through hour four or five and I'm just now able to start seeing the oil peek through. Cheeks are still matte, around the nose is still matte. I will check in with you guys again when I'm ready to take it off. Guys, look at how bad this under eye looks. Can we just like act like I look like this? It's currently 10 o'clock at night, so I've had this makeup on for 12 hours. My forehead really doesn't look much different than it did three or four hours ago. The cheeks still look the same. I can tell that the makeup is starting to settle though because I don't look as filtered as I did. This texture was not super apparent earlier and neither was this, but it's not breaking up weird. And my forehead doesn't look oily. It just looks like it kind of has a little bit of a glow. I have no complaints. I would rate this a solid 10 out of 10. It was really easy to apply. I feel like it had really good coverage. The shade range is acceptable. It did not oxidize or anything like that. I will see you guys in the morning for day number five. We are running a little bit short on time today. So I'm really just gonna do like base makeup. I'm not really gonna do eyeshadow, blush, bronzer, any of that. For primer mist today, I'm gonna to use this Too Faced Hangover 3-in-1 Replenishing Primer and Setting Spray. Hydrating primer, I'm gonna go ahead and use the Hard Candy Hydrating Primer. This is supposed to be a dupe for the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip. They work pretty similarly. They're actually identical in color, which is funny. The Milk Makeup Hydro Grip is just a little bit thicker in texture. I let that tack up for about 30 seconds like I do with the Milk Makeup. Go in my T-zone with this Milani No Pore Zone Mattifying Primer. I wanna go ahead and try out a foundation stick. Makeup Forever Ultra HD Invisible Cover Stick. I have the color Y505. I was actually really excited to try this because the only stick foundation that I've tried and ended up liking was the Hourglass one. And when I swatched this in the store and in my haul, it was so super creamy. It comes in 20 shades, five shades on the darker end of things. And then some of these shades look really, really similar. Shade range is like a six out of ten claims to have a natural finish with full coverage it's supposed to be long wearing medium to full coverage because it's supposed to be buildable but it's not claiming to be waterproof or sweat proof or transfer proof or anything like that i have found that with stick foundations i do prefer to use a brush because the formula is a little bit thicker usually because i mean you think it's not a liquid so it's not thick in a bad way it's just literally thicker do you guys see how smoothly that glides onto the skin the texture of this is identical to the hourglass. Gonna go in with my e.l.f. sponge. Not having a super hard time with a the sponge. I found that when I use stick foundation, I just feel like I have to use a little bit more force to blend it out, but this is very, very blendable. Very, very breathable. Like I don't feel like I have really anything on my face. For the first layer, I feel like I'm definitely getting more medium coverage just because I still can kind of see my imperfections peeking through. It doesn't even look like I have makeup on. First impressions by far, this is the most skin-like foundation that I have tried. Since it's not acting cakey or anything like that, I'm gonna go ahead and just swipe over the areas that I feel like need a little bit more coverage, which that's the nice thing about stick foundations is when you build it up, it's very easy to just put the product right where you want it. So see where I just put that extra coverage? It pretty much got rid of all my discoloration. I can still see some kind of peeking through. It is buildable. I feel like I have more full coverage with the second layer. This is so satisfying. The other stick foundation I've tried, it kind of like grips and gets stuck on the skin and then it drags and 
it's just not a good time. I'm predicting that I'm gonna get a little bit more coverage with the brush, so let's see if I'm right. I developed this lovely pimple right here overnight because that definitely was not there yesterday. Oh my gosh, this is so buttery. I think that I honestly like just gave up on trying stick foundations because every formula I tried was so dry and was so hard to blend out. It wasn't easier with the brush than it was with the sponge. They were both pretty similar. Surprisingly, I got about the same amount of coverage with a brush that I did with a sponge. Discoloration right here and then this pimple right here. It's not hanging on to any of my texture weird. It's just covering everything up and looking really, really pretty. I'm gonna go ahead, quickly throw on some concealer and some powder, do my brows real quick, and I will be right, back. Guys, I went ahead and just threw on some concealer, loose powder, powder foundation, and some brows. I actually used the Makeup Forever powder foundation, which is like one of my favorites of all time, so I thought it would be very fitting, and also did setting spray. It's currently 129, which I need to be out the door in a minute. This is what the face is looking like right now. I do wanna mention, though, that my forehead is kind of looking a little shiny, like not oily, just naturally like it has a glow when you're in the sunlight. So I wanted to note that. That way when I'm looking through my face throughout the day, I remember that this is what we started with. I feel like I was able to reach full coverage with that powder foundation. If I'm able to check in in a couple hours, I will. If not, I will see you guys when I'm ready to take it off. All right guys, it is currently 5.50, so I'm on hour five. The makeup is not feeling heavy or anything like that. I feel like it really has not even changed much. If anything, it is starting to sink in a little bit right around here. Not in a bad way, but you can just see it's not as filtering as it was on hour one. I was expecting to have a lot more oil breakthrough on my forehead because it did claim to be a natural foundation. I feel like it looks maybe a little bit more oily right in here, but for this to be hour five, the makeup looks really good in my opinion. This is what we're looking like, no complaints. Guys, it is two days later, so I went ahead and just quickly filmed what my face looked like two nights ago when I was ready to take it off because your girl was going through it. I was crying and it was just not a good day. The makeup persevered through my crying. I honestly felt like my oil did not break through very much. If anything, it broke up a little bit around my uh, forehead, but yeah, I was like touching my face and doing this and it was so lightweight that I kept on forgetting that I had makeup on and for me to be touching my face and crying, I felt like it looked really good. I plan on keeping all of these foundations. I don't plan on getting rid of any of them. If I had to rank them by favorites, I would probably say the Makeup Forever was my favorite because I'm so happy that I have another foundation stick that I like and it has had really good longevity, had really good coverage, was very smooth and buttery. Number two would be the Hourglass Vanish. I felt like this was very, very beautiful on the skin, had really good coverage, and was also long lasting. They all were really long lasting to be honest. I would say number three would be the Clinique Even Better Foundation. Number four would be the Dior Air Flash. Number five would probably be the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Foundation just because it oxidized so, so so bad. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I do plan on doing more of these in the future, so I hope that you like them. I have so many new foundations that I need to try, and if I don't like them, I want to be able to get my money back and return it. That way I can spend that money on another product to test for you guys. If you guys liked today's video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I post on this channel every four days, so you never have to miss me for too long. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.